From the roar of the crowd to the roar of the engine, this is Pit Pass. Pit Pass is brought to you by Aaron's of State College on the Benner Pike. By W.R. Hickey Beer Distributor, celebrating 80 years. And by Pocono Raceway, the Tricky Triangle. Here are your hosts, Ron Fox and Jan Miller. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Pit Pass. We have quite a bit of highlights and interviews in today's show. We went to Sealings Grove on Saturday and Sportsman's on Sunday. But we will start off this week's show with some highlights from Friday evening at Bedford Speedway where it was $5 fan appreciation night. The Semolates got the night started with a strong 25 car field. At the drop of the green, it's a drag race into the first turn between the one of Tom Warren and Greg Hainsey in the 31 machine. On the exit of turn two, Warren starts the inch past Hainsey. The 77 of Lou Wannon and 58 junior Ryan Beckett race for the third spot. Coming through turn four, they make a little contact with Wannon taking the position. Less than a lap later, Wannon is sideways in the middle of three and four and Beckett has nowhere to go. On the single foul restart, Warren and Hainsey pull away from the rest of the field, which is led by Bob Jay. Yet Jay in the silver number four then closes on Hainsey, who starts to lose a little distance on Warren. A couple of laps later, Zane Wheat in the blue and white 45 joined the mix as he challenged Jay and Hainsey. A couple of cautions led to this lap nine restart. Hainsey looks to the inside of Warren. Wheat sets up in the middle of the turn to dive under the 31 as they exit turn two. Yet Hainsey would maintain the position. Wheat would eventually make his way up the second and challenge Warren. Coming down to take the checkers, Wheat shoots to the outside of Warren. In a photo finish, Zane Wheat picks up the victory. Jim Saylor, Greg Hainsey, and Bob Jay round out the top five in the Semolates. In the limited late model feature, Travis Calhoun in the orange number 36 led the field to the green for their 18 lap event. The 71 of Curtis Heath makes a bid for the lead, but falls back into a battle with the number 11 of Ron Bottenfield and Craig Perigo in the 1A machine. Perigo has the third spot as they race through turns three and four. While the 77 of George Dixon and 39 of Tim Smith Jr. battled for sixth place, points leader Robbie Black in the 0-1 takes fourth away from Bottenfield going down the front stretch. Black would later take the third spot away from Perigo and set his sights on Heath. The top three were only separated by a few car lengths. As they exit turn two, Black shoots to the inside of Heath. By the time they hit turn three, Black has the position. Dixon would catch Bottenfield on the front stretch then take over the fifth spot with this move through one and two. By lap 12, Black had caught the leader. He races Calhoun down the back stretch, then takes the lead as they go through three and four. Perigo and Dixon would get tangled up with some lap cars to bring out the caution with two laps to go. On the restart, Bottenfield makes a move to the low side to challenge Dixon for the fourth spot. He falls into line with Smith and the 15 of Josh Barrier on his tail. But a multi-car accident slows the field. Black pulls away from Calhoun as they get back underway. Heath is right on the rear bumper of the 36. Dixon closed on the 71 for a moment, but fell back, having to contend with Smith and Bottenfield. Robbie Black would pull away from Travis Calhoun over the final two laps to pick up his fifth limited late model win of the season. Robbie, you were very methodical when moving up in the field. You weren't reckless or aggressive. No, we don't, you know, if you sit back and wait a few laps and let the field kind of stretch out, our car works good enough that you can kind of just pick your way up through, get to the front, and then get comfortable. Now, did you feel the cautions were a help or a hindrance? They kind of hindered my car a little bit. It, I overheated the right front and them cautions, and uh, I just couldn't get the car to steer the way I wanted it to after the caution, after my right front would cool off. But uh, we managed. The car was good enough that uh, we still stayed out front, which... We usually do here, and we just got a real good car for this place, and we got a lot of laps here, so it, it makes it a little easier on me. 
And you had quite a lead on Travis. Did that make you comfortable? Yeah, my guys always stand at the corner, same spot every week. You know, they told me, you know, they tell me you're know, stretching it out, which is, you know, with the motor we got, we got a Joe York motor and, uh, you know, this rocket car that we've been running the last three years. It just, it's a good combination and we've been pretty good here. Well, congratulations, Robbie. Thank you. Following Robbie Black across the line in the limited late model feature were Travis Calhoun, Curtis Heath, George Dixon, and Ron Bottenfield. In the pure stocks, we pick things up with this restart with five laps in the books. The green 42 of Charlie Walter led from the drop of the green. Here he is challenged by the red 7 of Travis Group and Bill Replogle in the 65 ride. Replogle clears the group and closes on Walter. Walter and Replogle will continue to pace the field while Dave Riley in the number 17 worked the outside of group to take over third place through turns one and two. For a number of laps, Rep Logo would make bids for the lead by working to the inside of Walter, but on the last lap, he made this move on the outside of the 42. He has half of a car length on Walter exiting turn two. Down the back stretch, Riley pulls even with Walter. As they race through turns three and four, Walter slides up a bit, yet can't keep the 17 at bay while Bill Replogal goes on to take the victory. Congratulations on your win, Bill. You and Walter really diced it up out there. Yeah, it was a pretty close race. I didn't think I was going to get him there in the last lap, but uh, he got a little bit too low, and uh, I got on the outside of him and was able to take the lead. So I felt bad taking that from him because he hasn't won yet this year, but uh, it's my uh, fourth win of the year, so I'm leading to points, and uh, I hope to keep this up. Well, tonight's fan appreciation night, and there's a large crowd, and I see that you also brought your sons. Yes, I brought my, uh, my two boys, uh, my wife come along, my father-in-law. There's a bunch of us that come along tonight because the family appreciates appreciation night. Um, five dollars again, and I wish more tracks would do that. I mean, that's nice. I mean, it packs the stands, and it seems like everybody had a good time tonight. Yes, they did. And uh, Williams Grove also does five dollars a night. Yeah, well, that's good. I'd like to see more tracks do that. Try to get the, try, try to get the people back in the race and stuff. I'd, like, I'd really like to see more of that around here. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. A last lap pass enables Bill Replogle to pick up his fourth victory of the season in the Pure Stocks. Second through fifth were Dave Riley, Charlie Walter, Travis Group, and Terry Norris. Cale Martin won the fourth cylinder feature, which was cut short due to time. Andrew Paluta, Dustin Drake, Eric Boozel, and Ryan Peer completed the rest of the top five. And in the E-Mods, Jonathan Taylor picked up the win over Evan Taylor, Vic Vandergriff, Brandon LaSalle, and Adam Daniels. The All-American Outlaws made a stop at Bedford on Friday as well. I catch up with founder Daryl Winkler later on in the show. And coming up next, we go to Sealands Grove Speedway for some highlights from Saturday evening, including their late model summer championship. Pit Pass returns right after this. <laughs> 